right, so here is our GitLab instance. Um, and what we have done is simply import a, a very simple minimal Ruby application. Um, as you can see here, we can go check out a repository. Um, really could not be any more simple. Again, focusing on the business value of, of continuous delivery as opposed to you know, some of the technical uh, nuts and bolts here. Uh, but again, you can see it's 10 line Ruby uh, code uh, project that simply prints out, of course, the classic hello world. Um, and if we go back, uh, you can see we also have a Docker file here. Again, very simple. We're gonna be basing it off uh, the default Ruby image um, adding our Ruby file and then running it. Um, so again, really, really simple and straightforward. The next thing we have done already for you uh, is we have configured our Kubernetes integration, uh, again, since we're running on GKE. And this gives us uh, two great things. Number one is we can uh, kick off the tooling that runs the various build, test, and deploy projects uh, on Kubernetes. And then number two, of course, we can actually run our environments themselves also on Kubernetes and GKE. So it's a great way to do this. Um, and we think this is really um, how folks are gonna do things in the future. So with that, let's go ahead and configure our CI CD. Um, you can see we've got two buttons here. Uh, one is to set up CI. The other is to set up auto deploy. We're gonna go ahead and pick the auto deploy section. Um, with this, we give you a few great templates to go ahead and get started with um, that work for a pretty large number of folks out of the box. Uh, what they do is, I just gotta go ahead and simply enter in my domain here. There we go. Um, what they do is they leverage some build packs that generally know um, how to build and deploy uh, various types of uh, projects, um, of which Ruby is one. And so some of the details of you know, how to build these things is, is kind of removed. Um, and we have instead five simple stages, build, test, review, staging, and production. Um, and we'll go through and we'll follow these um, as part of our CI CD pipeline. So let's go ahead and let's commit the changes. We'll commit them directly to master because we want to configure our CI CD system. And again, this file is how you go ahead and do that. And there we go. So we've now committed our uh, uh, CI YAML file and we've told the system what to do with um, commits and, what to, um, and how to kind of run them. And you can see actually we have our first pipeline already kicked off because we now made a change to our repository. And you can see here we've got three stages, build, staging, and production. This is off the master branch. And you can see build's already completed. So let's go ahead and take a look at what happened there. The first thing we did is we pulled down that Ruby Docker image that we specified. Uh, we then uh, added our Ruby file. And we then simply repackaged uh, that uh, and posted it to our own GitLab container registry to make it available for deployments. And that was quite simply the build stage. Staging is just about wrapping up here. Um, and you can see it just finished in fact. And simply it's gonna take that new packaged uh, Ruby image with the Ruby file that we're running our code uh, and go ahead and deploy it on our staging environment. And that has completed. And you can see here, uh, this has deployed to staging. So that's great. Let's go ahead and click on staging. And let's go ahead and open up our staging website. And you can see here, we have our classic hello world text. So that's great, staging is operational up and running. And at this point in time, uh, we can invite you know, testers, we can invite uh, perhaps some, maybe some customers involved who had some features or bug fixes they were passionate about to check things out. But really you can kind of start the whole collaborative process. And as you can see from the developer standpoint, I didn't do anything aside from simply commit my changes, which is what you're already doing as part of continuous integration multiple times per day anyways, right? So that whole deployment process uh, is, is completely automated. There isn't any more you know, waiting for uh, a integrated test environment to get up and running, right? This all happens automatically um, and it's available from the first time a developer right, commits their changes. So it's super powerful um, to really accelerate that whole feedback cycle. So, that's staging, right? But that, 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 that's great. But let's go ahead and explore a little more here. 
let's make a change now, right? Because of course, this is what your developers will do. They'll go ahead and say, you know what? I just got an idea and I think we can make this better. And one thing we can do is add a little more enthusiasm, right? Hello, amazing new CI CD world, right? I'm excited. We've added more flavor. And of course, um, since we're a developer, we're gonna go ahead and create our new branch, right? So we'll go ahead and make our new branch. We'll go ahead and actually create a new merge request as well, of course, right? Because we wanna have one of those ready. Um, and let's see if our new enthusiasm, maybe our, our new kind of passion and flavor might uh, lead to some new business, some new conversions, you know, whatever you got working on, right? Because this can be used not just for developers, but also marketing folks and a number of other uh, types of uh, folks out there across your business. So let's go ahead. We have a merge request ready to go. We'll go ahead and submit our merge request. And you can see we actually already have a pipeline running again, right? So we've gone ahead, we've made a feature branch, our more flavored feature branch. And uh, in this case, our build has already succeeded. That's great. And you can see we now have a review stage that's now uh, happening. And what happens here is because this is a feature branch, right? And we haven't actually committed our changes back into master, right? Which is kind of like the, perhaps the source of truth in this development model. Um, you know, and normally in this case, you know, it might be a challenge for some, you know, uh, other users to see my changes, right? Um, I have to wait until perhaps I get into the staging and have my commits actually merge before I could um, again, show them off the product or QA or, or whoever really. But with CI CD now and review applications, I actually have an environment that is running the latest and greatest version of my particular branch. So let's go ahead and take a look at that, right? So here's my review branch um, called, of course, More Flavor. And it's, of course, is running my code. So I can go ahead and take a look at this. And there we go. I have my new Ruby code running on a new branch. And this is really the first commit, of course, remember, I made to this branch, right? So the second I start a new branch and start work, I now have a new environment that's gonna track the latest and greatest of that. Then again, there's no more waiting for environments. I can now invite feedback from product, from QA, from documentation, from marketing, right? Everyone can get involved and to look at the latest and greatest of my work. So super powerful here and really changes uh, a lot of, uh, of, of how people get things done. So that's great, right? So review environment, that looks good. Change looks amazing. We're all excited about it, right? Marketing's excited. Um, and we're gonna go ahead and commit this. All right, so we'll go ahead and accept the merge request. This is now going to get merged back into master, right? And you can see now that that's happened, I now have a new pipeline that's running. And in this case, we have a build that ran, and we now have, oops, sorry, new pipeline here. There we go. And you can see we have our new quick office running, right? So our build is compiling, and once that is finished, it'll get deployed to staging, right? Again, because this is now being updated into our master branch, which will then get deployed automatically to our staging environment. So you can see here, build of course worked because this process, again, doesn't change, right? So it's reliable and it's repeatable, which if you have perhaps some longer dev cycles involved with some significant changes, that, that could be a challenge, right? If you have some manual processes in there. So in this case, you can see that staging has completed, right? I can go ahead and click on our staging environment. And what used to be, right, the old plain vanilla, you know, hello world is now updated with additional flavor, uh, more passion, and again, this looks great, right? So at this point in time, we can have our load testing happen, whatever else needs to happen in your staging environment that occurs to make sure you're good to go for production. And once you've completed those, you can simply go back, look at your pipeline, and you can see we actually have a production stage right here. I can simply click on play. And at this point in time, I now have a new job to take my changes from staging, right, and deliver them to production. And again, this process is repeatable, same deployment, same code runs for staging to production um, or could run, and um, it's all completely automated. So this will take about our second here. Our uh, container and our pod are just spinning up. 
um, and we're waiting for them to be finished. And once we are, we can go ahead and check out our brand new updated production environment. Just take one second here. Let's see if it's finished. I think it is. And there it is. It actually is finished. So it finished in the course of navigating to the page. So there you go, right? So CI, CD, right? And the power of continuous delivery um, and really shortening that feedback cycle and making sure that developers can get a feedback essentially with their first commit um, and not have to wait for environments to come up, um, wait for a single consolidated integrated test environment. Um, really, um, you, know, you want to avoid those things if at all possible here. And I think this really shows you why um, and how you can leverage these tools to really help make your business run significantly faster and help your customers to see the value of what your developers are working on and what they have done much more quickly.